Hey folks, Derek here again from DigiSplint. Um, again, I'm just doing a little video series on different measuring techniques and sizing. Um, again, therapists who have our measuring kits, uh, you've got a nice little accumulation of rings here on, uh, on, uh, on a chain. And uh, each one of these rings is an exact replica, again, of the same ring that I use to make up the splints. So today we're going to be talking about the boutonniere splint. All right, uh, boutonniere splint, uh, three points of pressure. What we want to do is keep a finger in extension, and by doing that, uh, again, I can build boutonnieres for any of the IP joints of, of, the, of the hand. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll work today just with, just out of convenience sake, just my left index finger. Uh, for my pressure points, I want them right over top of the joint, dorsally. All right, so that's going to be one pressure point. Another pressure point is going to be between the PIP and the MCP. All right, uh, closer to, a little bit over halfway uh, between, towards closer to the MCP side. Another pressure point, again, is going to be just a little bit past the halfway mark between the PIP and the DIP, uh, just on the palmer side like that. So my three points of pressure are going to be one on top, there and there. Again, what that does is it limits flexion, or it keeps the finger in extension. And when we've got our sizers, like I said before, these are exact replicas. The very first three rings that you see on the sizers, let's see if I can hold those up for you, um, are the size of the spacers. These are the, now the spacer is the ring that connects the two larger ones. It's the one that sits in the center, all right? Um, if you don't mark which size, I just automatically use a medium size spacer. So what that does, again, that's going to be the one that sits right over top of the joint. All right. Now, I'll get back to the rings. Uh, I'm going to mark our three points of pressure with a marker or with a pen. All right. Uh, I had mentioned a little bit over halfway between the PIP and the MCP. Right there is going to be a pressure point. Between the PIP and the DIP, a little bit over half because we want a little bit of leverage for this guy. All right. So there we go. So I've got my two points of pressure over top. Now, my third point, right over top of the joint, all right? But we want to keep in mind that we want a flatter surface area up on the top or a little bit of a surface area so it doesn't, so it's more comfortable. And that's where I've got the three sizes of spacers. So what I like to do is actually mark on each side of my center mark of the joint like that and that's where I want my spacer to sit all right so it will sit just like so and I'm going to connect the dots the outside point come a little closer I'm going to connect this dot with my distal coming right towards palmer side and then I'm going to take this point here connect my dots again to the proximal pressure point Right over like that, okay. You can see now exactly where the splint is going to be fitting on the finger, all right, to create some extension. All right, so we've got our drawings <clears throat> on, all right, for the boutonniere splint. You can see I've got my, how I've got my space marked at the top here too. And we take our rings and we fit them over top. Now I'm gonna take a size 11, uh, which is uh, 14 and a half, 14. Now you'll see on these that uh, they say a number and they say a number with a dash. That dash is a half size, okay? So 11 dash is 11 and a half. 11 is a little bit smaller, all right? And I fit it right over top of my drawing. I don't know if you can see that clearly on there. And you can see how I'm hitting the spots that I want to hit. All right, I'm hitting my lines exactly, and it's just coming to where I want it to be, right over top. All right, so that's my proximal size, size 11. All right, and when I slide it on, it comes with some resistance coming off. That's another important fact that we're looking for. If you're looking for something that's tight or loose, if you can't decide between 11 and a half, always err on the side of a bit snug, because you can adjust the splits by squeezing them closer together to tight or to loosen them up, or spread them further apart to. Uh, to tighten them up. So size 11 proximal and I'm going to go with size 10 distal and you can see that it is actually off the line a little bit. All right, so that's a little bit large and it's also loose. I'm going to go down to a size 9 proximal which is this one right here 
and again I fit it right over top and there I'm hitting my lines exactly where I want it to be. So I'm 11 proximal, size 9, distal. And again, if, if you don't uh, tell me what size to use for the spacer, I'll just automatically use a size, like a medium. All right, the very first three rings on the, on the chain again are the three sizes of spacers. All right, and that's these guys right here. Now, I'm going to start with a medium, fit it right over top, and you can see how distally and proximally it fits right inside of that. So medium is an automatic one that I'm going to use on that. So that's how you measure for a boutonniere splint. All right, now, things to consider for a boutonniere splint. Um, pressure points aren't always uh, an issue. I've got a boutonniere splint here. All right, this is typical. All right, so I've got my proximal ring, my distal ring, and my spacer. Um, let's see if this guy actually fits me. It does actually fit me pretty good. Okay, and what it does is it limits flexion, keeps me in extension. Again, if I want to loosen it up, I squeeze the rings closer together, tighten it up, spread the rings further apart. Um, the spacer that I use, the standard spacer, is an oval ring. All right. Now, sometimes we have little issues with, uh, especially if there's a lot of pressure, if we're forcing a finger like in extension, that the skin will start to pop through and it looks like there's a little bit of a ward or whatever. Um, what we can do is I can take that spacer and I can fill it. All right, that's an option. And it's going to cost a little bit more. Filled spacer, um, I can't tell you exactly what it is right now. Um, again, check the price list. But a filled spacer uh, looks just like this here. There's a comparison between the two. Maybe I can move that a little bit closer for you. All right, filled spacer is more comfortable. It creates a wider surface area. And it doesn't dig in so much. All right, something to consider again too for clients. And it depends on the, the degree of uh, pressure we're going to be using to uh, to uh, keep a figure in extension. All right, I hope that's been useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call again. It's 888-775-4687. Uh, again, my name is Derek. You can send me an email to derek at digisplint.ca. That's D-E-R-E-K at digisplint.ca. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you soon.